everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will continue on the topic of uh, A, D, M, E. A is the absorption in the GI, D is the distribution in the plasma and uh, other tissues, M is the metabolism that may be taking place in liver and other parts uh, inside and E is the excretion. Uh, so, we said absorption, we looked at the weak acids and weak bases because they are very very important. The pH inside the um, GI region changes tremendously. For example, if you ta look at uh, pH in the stomach 1.4 to 2.1, okay, then the uh, drug may go to duodenum, then it keeps traveling, okay, uh, jejunum where the pH is 4.4 to 6.6, and ileum pH is 6.8 to 8, and then colon 5 to 8. So, there is a large variation in the pH starting from very highly acidic to basic. So, most acidic drugs and weakly uh, basic drugs uh, are absorbed in the stomach. Basic drugs are ionized in stomach and ionized in intestine. So, they are absorbed in the intestine. So, you need to design uh, depending upon uh, where you want the drug to get absorbed. And especially if it is a quick act, fast acting or quick acting you want it to get absorbed here, uh, slow acting you want it to get absorbed down the line and so on actually. Uh, so, we introduced uh, this uh, particular equation for pKa related to pH, pKb related to pH, um, log of charged versus uncharged. So, if you have charged molecule they are highly polar, they will not cross the membrane barrier. So, ideally it should be in the uncharged form so that they can cross the um, lipid membrane barrier. More the charged it will be, it will not cross. So, that is the entire strategy of absorption. Uh, distribution we said uh, uh, the body is like a big vessel, like a big pot containing lot of water. So, the drug gets distributed um, and of course, uh, the it is not uniform because you have plasma, we have uh, uh, the other uh, tissues, uh, so many different there intestinal fluids, fat tissues, intracellular fluids, transcellular fluids. So, some drugs uh, will get distributed only in the plasma, uh, if it is a highly lipophilic it may get absorbed in the tissue. So, the volume of distribution may change depending upon the type of drug and um, as I showed that the maximum concentration um, of that drug in the plasma uh, will depend upon the volume of distribution. Okay, higher the volume of distribution, uh, lower will be that max concentration, lower the volume of distribution, higher will be that uh, concentration. So, um, this equation volume is equal to dose by C naught, dose is the amount of drug we give. Um, so, they are inversely related, the volume and the maximum concentration it reaches, um, depending upon the type of drug, these will change and depending upon so many para parameters, the V can change. Um, then I also showed you a very interesting picture, uh, this was taken from this reference, uh, warfarin for example, has a, a very low volume of distribution, whereas if you take a chloroquine which is um, anti-malarial, warfarin is a blood thinning. Um, so, chloroquine has a very high volume of distribution, okay, so many drugs and um, uh, alcohols for example, okay also have uh, different uh, volumes of uh, distribution. So, as the volume of distribution becomes higher and higher, concentration also keeps going down and down actually. Okay. Then came metabolism because uh, there is lot of biotransformation taking place inside the uh, body especially in the liver and other places because of presence of lot of enzymes, oxidoreductase type of enzymes, lipases, esterases, hydrolases and uh, there are two stages of biotransformation. Uh, stage 1 where uh, either hydroxylation or oxidation uh, reduction takes place and then other the second stage there are uh, things like um, um, put sulphate type of groups get added. Okay. So, the drug action may increase or decrease, okay. so the drug may be more potent or less potent, um, uh, you may be forming metabolites which may be toxic, okay. so all these issues can happen. So, phase 1 changes drugs and creates for site for phase 2, okay. oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, these are the 3 things that happen. In phase 2, um, what we have is um, 
couples groups to existing in phase 1. So, conjugation for glucuronide with glucuronic acid or sulphate and so on actually this is phase 2. So, the uh, compound becomes hydrophilic so it gets excreted in the urine. In fact, the metabolism is supposed to be good uh, so that the body is cleaned with the toxins but drug also is viewed as a toxin and gets uh, metabolized. Um, many factors affect this bio transformation race, okay, age, the um, sex, the uh, species monkeys may have different metabolism as against uh, horses or animal la, like uh, um, rabbits or human. Okay. Clinical or physiological condition, sick patient, healthy patient, if you are giving other drugs, okay, those drugs may be acting on these drug and they may get getting metabolized. Food, what type of food we are eating? For example, charcoal grill, uh, grapefruit juice, Okay, so, it enhances um, some cytochrome P when a charcoal grill gets okay, grapefruit juice CYP cytochrome P 3 A. So, the metabolism uh, will uh, get affected depending upon the type of food. Uh, first pass metabolism that means uh, when it goes through the liver as a first pass you see a lot of metabolism and after that it reaches a steady state. Okay, so, uh, absorption, uh, distribution, metabolism, excretion. Uh, is the fourth. You have uh, glomerular filtration rate GFR glomerular flow rate of filtered fluid through the kidney. Okay. So, this is called uh, GFR creatinine clearance rate that is CCR or CRCL is the volume of blood plasma that is cleared of creatinine per unit time. This is a very useful measure of uh, understanding GMR. Okay. So, how much of creatinine uh, gets removed per time from the blood plasma. So, that tells you this GFR. So, you have the drugs, we have uh, oxidation or conjugation. So, you may find metabolites, stable adducts. So, if it is polar immediately it goes through the renal urine. Uh, if it is non-polar uh, these are stable adducts it may go into the biliary elimination stools. So, this is how the drugs get uh, excreted from the body. So, we have uh, oxidation, conjugation some stable products, metabolites because these are all polar, it gets removed in urine, non-polar it goes, it will get removed in stools. So, generally urine is the main, the GFR glomerular filtration uh, removes all drugs below 25,000 and as you know more, most of our drugs are uh, around molecular weight of 500 Dalton or less. So, okay, so chances are drugs can nicely get excreted through urine. Reduced by plasma protein binding only a portion of plasma is filtered. Tubular secretion active carriers process for cations and for anions and um, inhibited by probinicide. There is a passive reabsorption. So, as it tries to come out there could be again reabsorbed of lipid soluble drugs back into the body across these tubule cells. Okay, so, uh, uh, it gets excreted and there is a passive reabsorption of some of the lipids molecule. Okay. Effect of pH to make more weak acid red drug present in ionized form in alkaline pH therefore, it is less reabsorbed and excreted faster. So, if you have more weak acid drug present in ionized form in alkaline pH. Uh, chances are it will chances are it will not get reabsorbed. So, they will excrete faster and same thing vice versa for weak bases. So, if you have weak bases chances are it can get reabsorbed. Um, okay, so, you have something called pharmacokinetics which studies this entire ADME in a quantitative manner. So, what do we do? Uh, in human we look at the blood, we look at the urine, we look at fe fecus, we look at expired air and then uh, we find out concentration of the drug okay, and then we see how the drug uh, gets removed from the body. So, concentration in urine into volume of urine per minute divided by plasma concentration that is called renal clearance. Okay. Concentration in urine volume that gives you total amount of drug uh, that is getting removed in urine divided by plasma concentration that is renal clearance. If neither secreted nor reabsorbed then clearance is equal to clearance of inulin that which is 120 ml per minute. 
because inulin is neither reabsorbed nor secreted by the kidney after glomerular filtration. So, its rate of excretion is directly proportional to the rate of filtration of water and solutes across the glomerular filter. So, we can use inulin uh, to check how good the system is in excreting it. If completely cleared by secretion then clearance equal to clearance of P hupuric acid that is renal blood flow which is around 700 ml per minute. Okay. So, these parameters are very, very useful to understand the system um, how the urine in uh, the kidney works and how the clearance in the urine happens and it also gives you a measure of GFR. Okay. Um, so, if, the, uh, if you monitor the drug in the plasma, um, if, uh, if it is given as an oral drug, uh, the drug concentration increases, the x axis is your time, uh, y axis is your concentration, so it reaches a max and then starts coming down because of excretion. So, we can write a first order relationship CT concentration is equal to C naught that is the maximum it reaches okay so we can if we extend it the c naught e power minus t k l k elimination that's called that's a rate constant of k elimination if you take ln of both you are going to end up with the ln ln k elimination if you take logarithm this is with base 10 this is with base e we end up uh, dividing by 2.303 okay so what do we do we extend this right up to the end uh, if you have the x axis as sorry x axis as time y axis as logarithm c naught rather than ln okay then we draw this line extend it and see where it touches and you take anti log that will be your c naught okay and then uh, the slope will be your k elimination so we get uh, both the c naught and k elimination so this is a very useful relationship to understand how the drug will um, concentration falls down with plasma. We can even calculate what will be the um, half life of the drug that means uh, uh, the concentration comes to half its max concentration time it takes for the concentration to reach that we can find out. Okay. So, these are very useful pharmacokinetic parameters. In addition we can calculate volume of distribution a dose by C naught that is C naught is this uh, we know how much dose we gave uh, plasma clearance k elimination is nothing but the slope of this line into volume that is plasma clearance plasma half life that is how long it remains t half is equal to 0.693 by k elimination bioavailability is the area under the curve okay uh, when if it is given um, as a oral divided by area under the curve when it is given as a iv that gives you bioavailability so from this graph we can do a lot of calculation so we extend this and then uh, from there take anti log we get C naught uh, this slope will give you k elimination volume of distribution is dose by C naught uh, plasma clearance is C L is equal to k elimination multiplied by volume which you get from here T half plasma half lifetime 0.693 by k elimination. Uh, if you have uh, this similar uh, graph uh, when it is given in IV form uh, area under the curve in oral divided by area under the curve in IV form. Okay. Like I said uh, generally bioavailability has to be very high um, so that uh, the concentration at the target site is good, um, the efficacy of the drug is good, we do not have to give too much dose, uh, dose of drug so possibly toxicity also can be lower. Um, so, if you have uh, uh, multiple doses, so there is going to be some accumulation, accumulation of this drug maybe in the tissues um, or uh, it is not fully removed from the plasma. So, you may have uh, this type of up and down this is uh, loading doses that is why sometimes uh, the first dose um, or second dose may not be effective, but third fourth doses become effective because there is a slow build up um, of the drug uh, because of maybe tissue absorption then further desorption and so on actually. Okay. Um, of course, you need to watch out um, if you know the toxic limit of the drug you work within the toxic, toxic below the toxic limit. So, if you have the effective um, lim uh, range and toxic this will be nice to operate within which um, effective could be if you are looking at uh, antibacterial you know minimum inhibitory concentration. So, you want the drug all the time to be um, above that MIC, but it should be less than the toxic limit. Okay, so, to sum up ADME um, we have the dose given orally 
you have the stomach uh, pH is 2, we have the, we are talking about stability at these conditions uh, and then um, there are enzymes which may degrade the drug. Then solubility, uh, the drug has to be soluble uh, pH over a wide range. Intestine pH has become bigger, uh, it has to be still stable. Then uh, of course, you are forming metabolites, they have to be stable. Then we have the permeability that is it is crossing the uh, barrier. Um, so, permeability we talked quite a lot about permeability what is important in log P. Generally it is passive uh, type of permeability um, just like food pH is big um, we have something called PGB efflex ok. I will talk about this uh, later the PGB efflex um, there are P glycoprotein uh, which will throw the drug out ok. So, those things uh, we will talk about it. Um, then of course, my, the uh, metabolism phase 1 metabolism, phase 2 metabolism and then you could also have proteins um, binding there are if you have acidic uh, drugs uh, protein binding could be a big problem ok. Then uh, apart from liver you need to consider other enzymes present in the body um, whether your drug gets uh, stable or not. And then of course, the kidney the urine excretion comes into the kidney permeability all those come into the body. And then permeability to the specific uh, site again through pa uh, passive you can have again PGB efflex coming into that means P glycoproteins may be throwing your drug out um, and uh, that will lead to reduction in its concentration. And then this distribution volume of distribution which we talked about um, which can alter the concentration of the drug in the body. And then again we have the permeability. Um, then cellular partitioning if uh, the drug is go, um, going in the presence of cells there could be partitioning of the drug metabolism happening and finally reaching target site. So, lot of uh, steps uh, before which the drug uh, goes reaches the target sites and exhibits bioactivity ok. So, the bioactivity is not disturbed but uh, the bioavailability and stability solubility and all these factors are disturbed because of presence of um, all these environmental um, changes as well as uh, presence of enzymes and so on. The activity um, does not get modified, efficacy can get modified because the drug can become uh, uh, less uh, efficacy because of uh, the metabolism of the drug. Uh, formation of uh, new molecules and so on actually ok. So, uh, uh, this entire set of steps affect the drug action overall uh, that is why many drugs when they go into clinical trials um, whether it is animal or human fail um, although it may have shown very good activity in the lab in enzyme assays uh, or some bacterial assays and so on. Ok. Um, there are many rules ok, many models rules which uh, um, give a feel of uh, whether a drug um, can be bioavailable um, orally bioavailable uh, whether it, it will satisfy all these uh, uh, conditions like good solubility and uh, good GI penetration and so on ok. There are many rules. So, we can uh, um, have a look at all some of these rules and um, when you have a new compound designed you can check it out whether it will um, satisfy all these rules or whether it does not satisfy all the rules. If you if it does not satisfy and if you feel there could be some problem you need not take that particular compound for uh, um, activity selection. So, we can use these rules also for screening uh, a large number of uh, molecules ok that is what we do ok. The uh, very uh, well studied well understood well um, considered is called Lipinski's rule of 5 ok. Lipinski and his co-workers at Pfizer looked at a large number of drugs that is drugs which have sort of uh, accepted by FDA and passed the FDA. Um, so, they picked up and they said all these drugs satisfy certain conditions. Oh, the first one is molecular weight less than 500. So, um, they said 
uh, you should have molecules which are reasonably small less than 500 you cannot have very large molecule. Please note this is for uh, oral these uh, this uh, rule is all the rules I am going to talk about is for oral um, drug not for um, IV or IP and so on. Uh, number of hydrogen bond acceptors less than 10 that is oxygen and nitrogen okay, are defined as hydrogen bond acceptors. Uh, please note if uh, if you have an acidic O minus then um, then it will not be an acceptor but oxygen and nitrogen are defined as hydrogen bond acceptors. Hydrogen bond donors that is NH or OH should be less than 5. These are very important because these determine the hydrophilic lipophilic uh, nature of the molecule plus also how they go and bind um, and with the various enzymes. So, number of acceptors should be less than 10, number of uh, uh, hydrogen bond donor should be less than 5 and log p uh, which I defined that is the octanol water partition coefficient should be less than 5. That means, uh, um, if it is more than 5 um, you are talking about a molecule which is very hydrophobic um, and if it is less than uh, 0 or less then uh, we are talking about a molecule which is very hydrophilic. So, both we do not want. So, according to them uh, it should be in this region, but there are rules which narrows this uh, region also. So, according to them if two parameters are out of range um, then chances are it will definitely um, have a poor absorption or permeability and bioavailability also will be low. So, do not take up that molecule. If one of the parameters are bad chances are maybe it may um, have reasonably good GI absorption. Okay, but if two do not. Okay, so, that is the rule. So, uh, molecular weight less than 500, uh, the number of uh, hydrogen bond acceptors less than 10, number of hydrogen bond donors less than 5, log p uh, less than 5 that is 0 to 5. This is called the Lipinski's rule of 5. Similarly, there are many rules as I said we are going to look at some of them. Uh, we have another rule called Gauss et al. This is called drug likeness property. Okay. So, this came up with the law again log p, um, there are many prefixes m, a. So, these are calculated using different softwares. Uh, so, this gave little more range minus 0.4256 molar refractivity between 40 to 130. So, they brought in a new uh, parameter. This is the volume occupied by an atom or group and is dependent on the temperature, the index of refraction and the pressure. Okay, this is the volume occupied. So, they bring in the volume um, between 40 to 130. Molecular weight look Lipinski said less than 500 whereas, they are bringing 160 to 480. They also bring number of atoms 20 to 70. So, they have uh, made some changes uh, they came up with new set of parameters or descriptors we call it parameters, descriptors, features of the drug. This is called Gauss at all drug likeness property. Then there is a Weber rule, uh, Weber rule for good oral bioavailability in rats. They said less than or equal to 10 rotatable bonds. Why rotatable bonds are important? Because if we have more rotatable bonds it can take up uh, different conformations. Um, so, the binding with proteins uh, um, have large degrees of freedom. The polar surface area should be less than 140. Okay, Angstrom square. If it is more, then of course it becomes more hydrophilic. It will not permeate through the GI. Less than twelve hydrogen bond acceptors plus donors. Okay, so they did not differentiate between hydrogen bond acceptors separately, donors separately, like Lipinski's. Okay, this is called Weber rule. Then comes another rule that's Muge et al. rule. So what they did was. Um, they looked at uh, a molecule and saw whether it had these type of functional groups. I mean amide alcohol, ketone sulfone like that you know. So, they gave a score based on the presence of a structural fragment typically found in drugs. So, they say drugs will have only these groups ester, urea, amidine, guanidine, carbamate, carboxylic acid, sulfamide, sulfone, ketone, alcohol, amide, I mean. So, you give one mark for that give one point for each non overlapping pharmacopoeic feature. That means, if it has got two ketone groups do not give two marks just give one. 
So, molecules with a score of 2 to 7 are classified as drugs. So, look at your molecule and uh, see how many uh, these groups are present. So, you give one mark for each of this non overlapping and if it falls between 2 and 7 then you classify as drugs. And these groups even if it is present one compounds containing a single feature of carbolic carboxylic acid or amine then you can uh, classify it as a drug ok even if it contains single feature that is there. So, how did they do it they looked at uh, the various functional groups present in all the commercial drugs approved in FDA oral drugs and then uh, they said uh, we will give one point for presence of each of these non overlapping group and if the score is between 2 to 7 you can classify it as a drug um, and if uh, the compounds contain this single even if it contains one single feature then we can also call classify it as a drug that is called mu gay rule. And um, the effective permeability through the intestine is calculated from this equation log P effective PSA is polar surface area HBD is hydrogen bond donors hydrogen bond donors means OH or NH. So, if, um, this uh, figure was taken from this reference uh, as you can see uh, okay, as the polar surface area is low that means it is uh, lipophilic the uh, absorption fractional the absorption in the intestine is very very high and as the polar surface increases that means it becomes more hydrophilic then it dramatically falls down and it comes to very low value uh, when the area polar surface area is above 140 angstrom square that is why as you can see in one rule uh, um, we said it should be less than 140 angstrom square but ideally it should be less than 100 so that you have absorption at least 50 percent ok. So, polar surface area should lie in this region that means lipophilicity um, is good but of course, we do not know whether uh, solubility will be good if you have more lipophilic. So, uh, you want to work in this region at the same time have a soluble molecule you do not want to work in this region. So, that is the based on polar surface area and hydrogen bond donors uh, trying to look at how the effective um, passive uh, permeability will be through. Then came log p as I said log p plays a very important role log p is uh, octanol water partition coefficient it gives you a hydrophobic hydrophilic balance uh, hydrophilic means soluble in water and blood hydrophobic means uh, soluble in the lipid and it gets uh, transported across and most of the drugs have log p between 2 to 4 uh, 4 or 5 um, highly hydrophobic you have some uh, anti um, fungal drugs having very high log p. If the log p is very low it is highly hydrophilic uh, it might not cross the barrier. So, uh, it may be given uh, in the form of uh, IV look at this morphine very low log p highly hydrophilic you have so many OH groups here ok nitrogen. So, it is always given as um, IV uh, as I said uh, C or M they are all using different softwares actually cocaine ok 2.72 Indian Evir 2.78 Amy Premin high log P because it is got only 2 nitrogen hydrogen bond uh, acceptors otherwise lot of CH 2s highly hydrophobic molecule here ok. Although this has got many O's it also has got many CH 2 groups uh, here the benzene rings and so on actually ok that is why log P is not very bad. The biopharmaceutical has classified drugs into four categories ok. Uh, it is called a highly soluble highly permeable um, then we have a, a poorly soluble highly permeable um, highly soluble poorly permeable uh, poorly soluble pure poorly permeable. So, four classification ok and uh, the highly soluble highly permeable there is no problem drugs uh, will nicely um, get solubilized in GI and they will also nicely pass through the membrane ok. For example, look at this and uh, delta Zem this is a heart pain um, high blood pressure cardiac arrhythmia uh, and so on. So, it is got a uh, highly soluble highly permeable. So, it is got lot of uh, uh, hydrogen bond acceptors are there at the same time it is got lot of CH2. So, it is nicely balanced. Inalapril this is for hypertension 
this is also highly soluble, highly permeable. Labitalol is chronic and acute hypertension. These are all salts as you can see here, okay, salts. Propranolol, hypertension and chronic heart failure. So, these are coming under class 1, highly soluble and highly permeable drug. Now, let us look at class 2 type of drugs, low solubility, highly permeable. That means, uh, it is um, uh, hydrophilicity is less, uh, permeability is good that means, it is hydrophobic. Okay. Uh, fluor by profen, just like ibuprofen, okay. fluor b profen, relieves pain, tenderness, swelling, stiffness, uh, given for osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Naproxen relieves pain, tenderness, swelling. So, it is got low solubility that means, a lot of drug can get excreted from the um, body because um, it does not fully dissolve permeability there is no point, no problem at all. Highly soluble, but permeability is low. That means, uh, it is um, hydrophilic type of uh, drug. So, it does not cross the GI, acyclovir, this is for herpes. So, you will see lot of nitrogens and oxygens. Famotidine, peptic ulcer, gastroesophageal reflex, that means, uh, acids come out through the esophagus. So, look at this, lot of nitrogen, so it is quite hydrophilic. Nadalol for high blood pressure, migraine, headaches, chest pain and so on. Again, it has got a lot of uh, oxygens. So, high solubility, it does not permeable through that. So, obviously, we need uh, some carrier to take it inside the body. Okay. Whereas, in the sec class 2, solubility is low. Uh, so, we can make uh, salts. In fact, they have made salts of this. Uh, you can, uh, okay, they are making salts of this, but still solubility is low. So, we may need to increase that. So, that uh, dissolves better. Here, solubility is good, permeability is poor. So, we need some carrier type of system to carry it across the GI. Next one, low solubility, low permeability. Everything is bad. Uh, it does not dissolve properly or nicely in the GI. At the same time, permeability is also very poor. Terfenidine is for allergic. Uh, furosemide reduces swelling, fluid retention caused by various medical problems. So, these drugs obviously, uh, have serious problem, we, need, we may have to make, uh, um, if these drugs are given in large doses, you can have toxicities also. So, you, in, there has to be some structural modifications to these drugs to improve uh, their uh, solubility as well as permeability. Okay. Solubility, we can improve easily making salts out of this drug, so that uh, or putting in OH type of groups, um, acidic groups but permeability may go down. If you want to improve permeability, we block uh, um, OH or N, uh, NH with CH3 that means, make it more hydrophobic. So, these are the four different types of uh, classifications, bio, it is called biopharmaceutical classifications, high soluble, high permeable, uh, low soluble, high permeable, high soluble, low permeable, uh, low soluble and low permeable. Okay. So, for each of these drugs, we may require different strategies for improving either the solubility or the permeability. So, we will continue further on uh, the uh, bioavailability and ADME. Thank you very much for your time.